Welcome everybody to Know Your Numbers. My name is Tim Francis. I'm thrilled to be here. I have wanted to share this knowledge for such a long time. I'm so excited we get to do this today. So uh, 10 years ago, this is me in, uh, in the basement of my home up in Edmonton in Canada, three roommates to help pay the rent. Uh, glamorous beginnings, as you can see, we've got the uh, sexy utility lights with dangling cables and everything. But you know what? I was so excited because I was a full-time entrepreneur. The world was at my fingertips. I was so good to go. And you know, just like most uh, up and coming entrepreneurs, I got really excited about marketing and sales, marketing and sales. Uh, on the left here, you can see this is Mark Cuban, one of the sharks uh, on Shark Tank. He's a Dallas Mavericks NBA team owner, you know, a reported billionaire. And he says sales cures all in the Inc magazines. You know, they're all about America's fastest growing companies. It's all about top line revenue. And we see quotes all the time, like the most important aspects of business is sales. Everything else is just noise. I used to hear that all the time. And so I thought, okay, great. I want a six figure business. And then I want a multiple six figure business and off I go. So I was working as a consultant, um, first in marketing and then more so in operation system. And I started getting some really great breakthroughs. So some of my clients included Ryan Levesque. Um, I was actually sitting with him at a lu at a lunch uh, in the Austin area when he got the call saying that the Ask Method book had gone to number one on the New York Times, I'm sorry, the uh, LA Times bestseller list. Um, Sam Carpenter, author of Work the System. I was a student of his. Perry, I was a student of his. And we also shared the, you know, had shared the stage. Uh, this guy who worked for uh, Google, Chris Clark, had hired me for some Colby consulting. So I was really coming along. I was working really hard. I was really good at what I was doing. I was really respected in my field. And yet I had little cash in the bank to show for it. And it was driving me crazy. And I happened to be in a workshop um, that Keith Cunningham was putting on. And someone, you know, said to Keith, hey, I need to double sales. And Keith took a, a quick look at, asked a couple like financials type questions. And I'm telling you in like under five minutes, he was able to diagnose the core issues. And, and around that time, I saw a couple other entrepreneurs do that too. Um, I, I saw, uh, I participated in the great game of business training as well. And, uh, and there's a few other situations. And you guys, I was totally blown away. I went, oh my God, here I am focused on revenue and revenue and sales and sales and top, you know, six figure, seven figure type business. And here I've got almost no cash. And when I watch total pros go at it, they're not even really all that focused on revenue. It's a part of what they look at, but they, they were able to see like at least 12 different levers in business. Sales was one of them. Sales was one of them. No question about it, but it wasn't the only one. There were like at least a dozen other, uh, a dozen levers that they could go and pull. And it was astounding how fast they could just see it all. It's like they had x-ray vision. And that was the moment that I realized the power of financials. And I went, oh my God, I need that skill. Now I had a problem and you might have this exact same challenge. I hate accounting. Oh my God, I hate accounting. I'm not a math guy. I failed calculus three times. I got rejected from business school three times. I despised talking to my accountant. Like, I mean, he would just say all these gibberishy things. And then after that, he'd slide me my income tax return and say, well, just go ahead and sign it, right? This is your name on this contract. That, I mean, that's, that's, that, that's what a tax return is. It's a legal document you're sending to the government say, you know, I showed my blood, sweat and tears and autograph. This is it. I promise you, I got it right. And yet I had no idea what I was doing. It was so horrible. And I was terrified of taxes. I was just like always terrified I was gonna get some big tax bill. It was such a crappy way. <laughs> it was such a bad relationship. Mean accounting, not cool. Um, so, but watching the way that these total pros would look at financials, all of a sudden, like if I hated accounting, like nine out of 10, seeing what these pro entrepreneurs could do I realized that financials are a treasure map. And now all of a sudden, even though I hated accounting nine out of 10, I wanted to learn so badly about financials, like 20 out of 10. And I was like, looking at all the work that I'd done, helping people with systems, helping people with marketing. And it just totally hit me one day. I was like, oh my God, here I've been pouring my blood, sweat and tears into helping people with their businesses and, and, and also building my own business. And I've done great work and it could have been for nothing. It could have been totally for nothing. Here, you know, I helped so-and-so create an onboarding process for their new team members. 
But you know what? If that onboarding process was to bring on team members that weren't needed because the company was unprofitable and it was just going to go out of business anyways, like what's it all for? Right. And what about all the hustle I'm putting into my own business to get customers and to produce and all the behind, like, and, and at the end of the day, if I've got nothing to show for it, like what's it all for? Right. And thank God I learned about financials as a treasure map. And so since learning about financials as a treasure map, I've seriously started winning at numbers. I've actually helped save four businesses from bankruptcy. Two of them were because they hired me for private consulting. Uh, one was private consulting, one was in our board of advisors program. The other two people were literally just students at our workshop called Know Your Numbers. They were just students, you know, they didn't pay thousands and thousands of dollars to work with me. They literally were just students. They paid their, you know, their few hundred dollars or whatever it was, and they were able to save their companies. Furthermore, I've helped find millions in new profit, not just revenue, but profit for my clients and also for myself. I've relieved massive frustration for my clients, people who felt like they were just at their wits end and they were just going to close their businesses or give up or do something different and help to help them emotionally, which then helps them in their families and be better parents and lovers and friends and leaders and all the rest. I also was able to raise my consulting rate all the way to a thousand dollars an hour because I was now like working at a very high level, solving very big problems. And it also has given me significant clarity on how to design multi-million dollar businesses because we know what numbers we can start digging around for to see what the true success factors are. So I want to thank you for being here because it is not just any entrepreneur that wants to get on a webinar called Know Your Numbers. I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs go numbers, hell no. Go show me the cool nifty headline trick or what's the sales tactic I can use to make the next sale. It's not every entrepreneur that wants to play at this like executive level and you are one of them. You are an elite entrepreneur who's looking to build themselves, not just as a great marketer or salesperson or yoga teacher or fitness professional or e-commerce Amazon owner, you know, whatever it is, you're looking to go the next level up and to be a total entrepreneur, like an executive entrepreneur. And I totally commend you on that. So what you're going to get today through knowing your numbers is enhanced clarity on where your money is and where it went. You're going to see how knowing your numbers helps you with clear decision-making at the executive level. You're going to gain a tool today that's going to help you predict to predict issues before they come. No more surprise tax bill that comes in and bites you because you didn't see it coming. We're going to show you some clear tools on how to become the executive leader in your business or in other businesses that you might be a consultant to or a mentor to or an investor in. Um, some cru crucial skills that are going to help you to lead and or buy other businesses. Now, I'm not going to show you how to value businesses today. That's not what today is. But you can't buy a business, I don't think, unless you know some of the basics of knowing your numbers. And then lastly, to enhance your confidence and, and show you how knowing your numbers can get you to rock solid confidence as an entrepreneur. And so the three elements we're going to cover today, one is executive decision making, two is entrepreneur accounting, and three is cash flow forecasting. So let's dive into the first of the three. Let's dive into executive decision making. So we saw this picture earlier. It's Mark Cuban. He says, sales cures all. And you know, this is him on Shark Tank. And he said, I'm sorry, this is a little blurry. It says, number one, sales cures all. There's never been a company in the history of companies that's ever succeeded without sales. Anybody who's ever told you, don't worry about sales. You can grow and uh, on and on. So he just like, this is like a no questions asked statement from a guy who's a billionaire. He's on TV. He owns an NBA team. And I'm actually going to show you how this statement is actually not true all the time. It can be true sometimes, but it is not, it's just not true. And yes, I'm going head to head with Mark Cuban here. And by the, in three slides from now, you're going to agree with me. I just, I already know it. So check this out. If we took the approach that sales cures all, let's say that you had a restaurant. Let's say that you were selling hamburgers for 99 cents. Then from there, we were to take a look at what does it cost for you to, to make that hamburger and to give it like, and I, let's not even worry about the wages that you might pay your cook, but let's just say, let's say you're doing it yourself. And, and so the, the only hard cost you've got is like the food itself. So our bun is 52 cents. Our lettuce is 12 cents. Our onion is one cent. Our tomato is seven cents. Our beef patty is a dollar five. Our mayo is four cents. Our ketchup is two cents. Our metric is, mustard is three cents. Total burger cost of a dollar 86. That's the, that is the hard cost that go into this burger. Okay, perfect. So let's now, let's now like know our numbers about this, right? So if we, if you remember, we said we're, these burgers are on sale for 99 cents, right? That's the picture on the left. 
So, okay, perfect. Our burger is 99 cents. That's how much revenue we have. That's how much we're selling it for. The burger cost itself, as we saw on this little infographic is $1.86. And so our, it's called gross profit. Like what does it cost for you to deliver, to, to produce one unit of whatever it is, whether it's a hamburger or whether it's, you know, uh, if you sell something on Amazon or whether it's, um, you know, uh, some consulting work that you're doing, whatever it's, you know, a website that you're building for someone, whatever the costs are related to delivering just one unit. And it applies if you have a product or a service. And this all makes sense uh, more and more and more as we keep going. So what, what this is saying is, you know, we're not going to worry about overhead. We're not going to worry about tax, you know, none of that other stuff. We're, or even your salary, none of that. But just the gross profit looks at just sales minus what are our direct costs for making this hamburger. And so you can see we're actually losing 87 cents per hamburger. But wait, hold on. Sales cures all, right? So we should probably just go sell more. Okay, so if we're going to go sell more, let's say that we're selling uh, 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 30 hamburgers a day. Uh, I did the math. I think it was, I think I was going on 30 or, 30 or 60 burgers a day. And the math works out to 36,000 burgers for the year, right? And so, and so because sales cures all, we're going to go sell 36,000 burgers. We just got to keep pumping more and more sales, right? So that means that we're going to sell at 99 cents, 36,000 burgers, $35,640. That's how much, that's how much sales is going to come in from selling burgers in the first year. And if you remember, it's $1.86 per burger. If we multiply that by the 36,000 burgers, that means it's going to cost us $66,960 in the first year to, to buy the supplies that go into this burger. And so our gross profit over 36,000 burgers is we've lost $31,320. Hmm. Well, okay. Um, sales cures all. So you know what? Let, let's just go do more. Let's double sales. That'll solve the problem, right? So instead of 36,000 burgers, we're going to go do 72,000 burgers. And so our sales are not 35.6, they're 71.2. Our burger cost is not 66.9, it's 133.9. And now our gross profit, just do the math, 71.2 minus 133.9, you've now lost $62,640. And so if you lost $31,320 in the first year, and you lost $62,000 in the second year, that's like ninety-three dollars or $94,000. You've lost almost $100,000 and it just keeps getting worse. But I thought sales cures all, right? Now, could this work out? I guess you'd have to be very clear though that you've got a way to make it up with the fries and the gravy and the milkshake and the other stuff. And that had better have a killer margin you, buy, you, you better be like making like 80% margin on those items and make sure that your front desk staff is upselling them all the time and that like you're selling enough of them to make up for the loss on the hamburger. So you can only do that though if you know your numbers. So let's take another example. Let's say an online course, right? So let's say we sell our online course for $100. That's on the left here. Let's say that you know, well, hey, an online course that has like no, no delivery cost, right? Because it's just like, it's just online, Un, you know, infinity replication. That's the beauty of online education. Okay, great. So does that mean that we're off to the races and everything's perfect? Well, how are we getting the customers, right? And so let's say that this particular course is using Facebook ads. And let's say that it takes $150 of paying for clicks for us to create one sale. Okay, perfect. So let's see how that plays out. Online course, we generate $100 per sale. So one course is $100 in sales. Our ad cost is $150 in ads. And so our gro gross profit, so remember gross profit is just what do we get and what do we have to spend to get just one more sale, right? To, to produce one sale and uh, one more sale and it's negative $50. But wait, hold on. In entrepreneur culture, it's all about the six figure business, right? That's like the big milestone. Okay, perfect, great. So then, so if we're just not making enough money, if in fact, if we're losing money, the answer is let's go build a six figure business. So, okay, all right, perfect. So right here, so in year one, we've got a six figure business now. So at a hundred dollars a course, we've got to make a thousand sales. A thousand sales at a hundred dollars is our hundred thousand dollars. We've got our six figure business. Our ad cost, if you remember, is $150 per sale. So that means we have $150,000 in ad costs. And so our gross profit is negative $50,000. Well, well, hold on. If a six-figure business 
didn't do the trick, you know what we need is we need a seven figure business because sales cures all, right? So, okay, perfect. So you're gonna go build a seven figure business. And right here in the next year, we scale this thing. Cause that's the answer is just scale it, just scale it. That's the answer, right? And so we got to do 10,000 sales of our hundred dollar course to produce a million dollars in revenue or sales, same thing. And if you remember, it costs us $150 per sale. And so our ad cost is $1.5 million. And guess what? We lost $500,000. So no kidding. Had you decided to stay home, not launch your online course, not have a business. And instead, all you did was sit on the couch and play Halo for that entire year, you would be $500,000 richer. Like literally just go watch sports center or go like fly a kite for the entire year. You'll be $500,000 richer, right? So now, okay, well, what if, what if, because we're really good marketers, we take our hundred dollar course and we're able to work with our cost per sale and we get it down to just $50. Okay, perfect. Right. So now we're set, right? Let's go scale that thing. Right? Because in my Facebook ads dashboard and in all my analytics, it's saying that I now have a positive profit on every single course sell. That means I got it made in the shade and I just scale this thing. Right? Well, okay. Let's see how that plays out because there's actually more to the story. There's not just how much we sell. There's not just what the ad cost is to create our gross profit, but there's also overhead. There's like a salary you have to pay yourself. You probably have subscriptions to different online tools. You might even need to like pay taxes somewhere along the way. I don't know. Most people have to do that. Right. And so even though our one, our single sale price gives us a $50 profit. Now, if we have an overhead of $75,000, all of a sudden we're down by 25 grand and our net profit is negative $25,000. And if we were to go and 10 X this thing, because that's the answer, Grant Cardone, 10 X this thing, right? Well, okay, great. So now we've got our million in sales, just like we saw on the previous screen, ad cost of 1.5 million. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, that ad cost should be 500,000. And so my gross profit is 500,000, but you know what? The more that you increase the business, if it's gonna be 10 times the size, you're gonna have more staff. You're gonna have you might decide to get an office. You might decide to upgrade some software. You might get some custom uh, coding done. Like all of this adds up. And if your overhead starts getting out of control, even if your gross profit is good, guess what? You've now lost a quarter million dollars. But Tim, 10 xing is the answer. But Tim, a seven figure business is the answer. Okay. Mark Cuban said sales cures all. Okay. Judge for yourself. What do you see on the screen? Right? What do, you, what do you see on the screen? So knowing your numbers allows you to actually get clarity on what's going on. Like when you can take a look at your financials, and you know what you're looking at. It actually gives you feedback. It's like, could you imagine shaving in the mirror or putting makeup on and not having that feedback? Like you're like shaving, shaving, but if you don't have the mirror, you're going to nick yourself, cut yourself. It's going to, it's not going to be good. Right. Or if a person's putting on makeup, it's like all of a sudden, like the lipstick is smeared halfway up the cheek. And then you walk around thinking life is great. And all oh, don't, I look so fancy and special. And all the meanwhile, everyone's just kind of looking at you like, Whoa, what's going on here. Right. We need that crucial feedback if we want to make it happen. So I'm going to draw for you. I'm going to draw for you a quick little drawing. And, uh, uh let me just switch over here. Okay. So what happens most of the time with, uh, with us entrepreneurs is, so this is us entrepreneur right there, ENT, and we make a bunch of decisions and those decisions lead to us taking action. And that action is going to take some time, some energy and some money. So the money part of our action then gets captured by our bookkeeper and summarized by our bookkeeper and our accountant. And then from there, what happens is the bookkeeper and accountant is they'll produce your, um, tax return that goes off to the government. You pay some money and that's that. And that's how things run in most businesses. Most entrepreneurs, that's the beginning and the end of it. 
What most entrepreneurs don't realize is there's actually a whole other opportunity for them. What if you could take all of the action and all the money moves, all the money that comes and goes, and what if we could produce entrepreneur financials and have your accountant help you? Your accountant's going to help you with this. Your bookkeeper's going to help you with this to produce your entrepreneur financials. Then from there, you'd be able to take a look at them and go, huh, now that I don't hate these things, now that I'm not avoiding these things like the plague, I'm going to take a look. How is sales? How are expenses? How much debt do we have? Who owes us money? Who do we owe money to? Like you get the full picture of what's going on with your business. And so because you're able to then do some executive decision making, now that's going to, that's now going to impact what you choose to do next. If this, if this was present, then you would be able to catch this situation immediately. And you'd be able to go, whoa, this is not working. We need to fix this, right? Or if you saw this happen, you would then be able to step in. A marketer would be able to catch this issue, right? But an executive level entrepreneur can catch the whole issue. They'd be able to say, ooh, cost for sale needs to, to change. We got to work on salaries. We got to work on some of our, you know, uh, uh, masterminds or consultants that we're paying for. We got to work on this because this overhead is out of control. We fixed the, this cost up here, the ad cost. Now we got to fix some other things in here. And now we're going to get this thing back to profitability. And when you've got that total picture, you can now take care of the whole thing not have one tool, but rather all dozen tools to be able to go and improve the situation for a business. And that's what I'm talking about when I say knowing your numbers. And I actually think knowing your numbers is actually less about accounting. It's actually more about decision-making. It's about accounting for tax, uh, for the tax people, for accountants and bookkeepers who are then going to send that off to the, the IRS or the Canada revenue agency or, you know, whoever your authority is. But for us entrepreneurs, what we need is really, really, really this second half here to help us to make executive decisions that are clear, that you're confident about, and you can see what's coming down the pipe. And that's very much what Know Your Numbers is all about. So, uh, and that's also why us as entrepreneurs, if you take all of accounting, we don't actually need to know all of it. In fact, you'd be astounded. Like, so the tax code is this massive book, massive. Like it would make the 1995 yellow pages, which is really big, uh, like seem like tiny because it, it like this, ta the, the IRS tax code is massive in Canada. Same thing. It's quite big. And that's what, that's what accountants are expected to refer to. And they have to know big chunks of it. And so of all of accounting, accountants need to know 98%. You and I, as the leaders of our businesses, possibly leaders of other businesses, 2%. That's all we need to know. Maybe it's 1%. I don't know, but it's such a tiny percent that we actually need to know. And that's what I'm focused on helping you with is the part that you need to know. So now you can take that knowledge and you can have a, 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 an educated conversation with your accountant. And now you can take advantage of their entire training and knowledge and experience and put that to your advantage while you get to lead your team with confidence. Okay. So quick story for you. And this is the first tool I'm going to share with you. And this tool is extremely powerful. I use it in board meetings all the time. And even if your business doesn't have board meetings, you can use this all the time in your own business when you need to make an executive level decision. And where all of this begins is many, many years ago, more than 10 years ago when I was a touring drummer. So I was actually a touring drummer for six years. We played 147 shows. We had three sponsors. We played around Western Canada. We made it all the way to the Western Canadian Music Awards. And 20 minutes before the show at the Western Canadian Music Awards, we broke up. And we broke up, and that was the last time I was ever in a band. After all the touring, all the late nights, all the heartache, and all the everything, I had a choice to make. And I decided, if I'm going to be the best in the world at something, is it going to be business, or is it going to be drumming? Can I see myself spending 80 hours a week practicing rudiments, and recording, and touring, and songwriting? Or can I see myself putting 80 hours a week into learning about marketing and sales and operations and accounting and project management and all the rest. And I said, you know, the cool answer would be drumming, but what's in my heart is entrepreneurship. And that's been my journey ever since. So this is Dantes. That was my stage name. And look at this flow. Look at this hair. I mean, and I'm in the middle of head banging, so it's extra huge. And this is, this is no messing around, ladies and gentlemen. This is no messing around. So when my band was together, 
we actually had a business coach. I think it sounds almost funny to talk about a music co- a business coach in music, um, but they actually can fit together. And we were trying to get into more venues. We were trying to get booked into like bigger, fancier, like nightclubs and bars and small theaters and whatnot. And so he taught us something called the decision-making matrix. Of, of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of venues that we could try and get in around Western Canada, it was tough to know where to even put our effort. And he said, okay, this is what you do. You list all the names of the bars you'd like to play at or that are even available in the first column. So the Urban Lounge is one of them. Then, uh, then from there, you got to rate on a scale of 0 to 10, how much does that bar have your ideal fan? And so Urban Lounge, we wanted to play there so badly. It was like 9 out of 10. Then the next question is, how easy is it to get booked in there, right? Because it doesn't matter if that's your ideal fan, if it's impossible to get into, get into if it's Madison Square Garden, you know, and you're just a small band, it's impossible to get in, then we better take that into account too. Is it even worth the effort? And so the Urban Lounge was a little tough. It was a little tough. Some bigger names had gone through there and we were a no one. So, you know, maybe we could get an opening act on an off night or something. So probably a four out of 10. Next, next venue, the Starlight Lounge. Pretty much just as ideal. The fans, is a little, like we were a rock band. It, it was, it occasionally had a little more folksy stuff, occasionally a little more electronic sometimes. So a little bit less, but still lots of our ideal fans would go to the Starlight Lounge. Uh, and, but it was even harder to get booked into. It was a bigger venue. Um, like, you know, acts that would tour with like tour buses would stop there. It was just, it was a little tougher. So then there's a place called Reds. It was inside of West Edmonton Mall. And it's this, you know, West Edmonton Mall is North America's largest mall. It's actually bigger than the Mall of America, uh, owned by the same family as the Mall of America. Um, but it's this mega mall. And in there, there's this place called Reds. And it was a little more like an arcade, bowling alley, and live music venue. Not as many of our ideal fans, so a seven. But it was a lot easier to get booked into. They had live bands all the time. So it was actually a seven out of ten. Then in St. Albert, which is the suburb I lived in, there's this little hole-in-the-wall, sad bar in a neighborhood called Aikensdale, and it was called LB's. And LB's, it was like a lot of people at the bar crying about what could have been. And their ideal, like some of them loved rock, but it just, and it's an older demographic, and it's, uh, we'll give it a five. And a five might be generous, but we'll give it a five. How easy was it to get in there? It was very easy. In fact, they had an open mic night that you could just show up. And if you had drumsticks, you could get on the drums. If you had a guitar, you could plug into their amp. Like it was so simple. So we do all of this with our music business coach. We're like, where is this leading? And he said, okay, perfect. So all you got to do now is multiply the two together to get a score out of 100. So a perfect score would be 10 ideal fan and 10 easy to book. 10 times 10 is 100. So, okay, we started putting it together. Urban Lounge scored 36. Starlight Lounge scored 24. Red scored 49. LB scored 50. Where did we want to go to start? We wanted to go to the Urban Lounge. And we were trying to get in. We had no luck. But as soon as we looked at this matrix and we could put some numbers around the situation, we went, oh, my God. The answer is LB's. This dumpy little bar (laughs) hasn't been renovated in, like, 50 years. Um, But but we got to go. And, and by going to LB's and playing the open mic night, we were able to get live shots, like live images, like pictures of us performing. And we got some live video and we got a testimonial from the bar owner that, you know, this great up and coming band. And then guess what? We took that and put that into our electronic press kit. And we took that to the Urban Lounge. And we said, okay, now that we have a little more experience, do you want us? And they said, no, 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 no. So what did we do? We looked back at our matrix here. And so then after that, we went to Reds. Reds is the next highest. And, and didn't have our ideal fan, but we played it. It's a big, bigger stage. It's another show on the resume, more live footage, more live audio, more live show pictures. And we added that to our electronic press kit. And then we went to the Urban Lounge and said, okay, we've now played LBs and we've played Reds. And we just kept this going until before you knew it, the Urban Lounge said, okay, got it. You guys are doing great. Let's bring you in. It'll be an off night, like a Wednesday night, but we'll bring you in. And that's how we got our first show at the Urban Lounge. So this is a decision-making matrix. I'm going to show you how you can bring this into your business right away. First though, it's story time. So I was working with a client and the client said, Tim, I want to double profit. I, and actually he said, I want to double sales. And I said, okay, why don't I double sales? And he said, well, um, I want to double profit. And I said, okay, that's interesting. And what is it that makes you know that you, that you really want to double profit? And he said, well, when I log into my bank account, 
I see not enough cash. And I said, okay, well, how much is there and how much would you like to see? And he said, well, there's $50,000 in there right now and I'd like it to be 100. I said, okay, perfect. So it sounds like cash is really probably what you're going for. And increasing sales and increasing profit is just kind of like a means to get there. Would you say that's right? And he said, yeah, actually that, that is right. I said, okay, perfect. Well, how about we focus on that? Let's not worry about sales. Let's focus on doubling cash. And so off we went. Now you can see this is actually a decision-making matrix, just like I showed you. And the first strategy that we had in mind was how about doubling revenue? Now, unlike the band example that I showed you, the way that we use these uh, columns is a little bit differently. And, and you can modify this if you want to different things, but this is just a sample so you can get a flavor of it. So doubling revenue, how simple is it to double revenue? Like, do you have to hire new people? Do you have to learn new skills? Is, there, is it complicated? Is it really technical? Like, what is it going to take? And it was something that was going to take a little bit of oomph. And so it was only a four simple. In terms of like how fast can you, uh, can you double revenue, it was probably going to take two years. Then I said, okay, how much do you control the situation? And he said, well, you know, five out of 10. And I said, how certain are you that it's actually going to work out? And he said, five out of 10. So control can be a big one because if you are driving all your customers from Facebook ads, you don't control Facebook ads. They could change the algorithm. They could change the terms of service. You could be hooped. If you're selling a bunch on Amazon, you don't control Amazon. They could launch a competing product or someone could come and be less expensive or something. You don't control Amazon. They can kick you off. All kinds of weird things can happen. So control matters to me in that reason. And certainly, certainly success, just like how confident are you in this plan? So then from there, I said, okay, great. So that's doubling revenue, that, which was the original idea. But what if we took another approach to doubling cash? What if instead of doubling revenue, what if we cut expenses? How simple is that? I mean, all you're doing is going into your credit card statement and seeing the things you don't use anymore, right? Stuff like that, maybe renegotiating some stuff. If you're, you know, if you're buying uh, 10, 10 units of something and you're paying one by one by one by one, maybe you can get bulk pricing. Like who knows, right? So we're going to take a look at expenses. And he said, oh yeah, that, that'd be eight simple. And cutting expenses is like usually one or two months is all you need to, to, to see the impact. So that's a, probably a seven. You definitely control how you spend your money. So that's a nine out of 10. The certainty of success is probably eight out of 10. And you can start seeing how these different factors have different opportunities. So now I was looking at his balance sheet because I, you know, I knew how to know my numbers. I knew how to read his financials. And I noticed that on his balance sheet, there was this thing called accounts receivable. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's not a problem. All you need to know is it's when people owe you money that they should have paid you by now. And your financials actually tell you that. And so I noticed that there was actually $60,000 of accounts receivable. And so I said, okay, so how simple, like, would you have to learn anything new to go and collect that money? He said, oh no, I, I mean, I know how to call people and request money. I said, okay, so how simple is that? He said, it's a 10, it's 10 out of 10 simple. I said, okay, how fast would it, like, you know, would this take you a couple of years or like how long? And he said, oh no, two weeks. I said, okay, so zero to 10, how fast would you rate this? He said 10. I went, okay, all right. So then I said, okay, how much do you control this strategy? Like of you being the one picking up the phone and, and calling these people for money. And he said, well, I control it entirely. I said, okay, zero to 10. And he said, 10. I went, okay. And I said, okay, now what about certainty of success? Like, you know, maybe these people hate you. Maybe they've blocked your phone number. Maybe they're pissed off. Maybe they're disputing you. Like who knows, right? So I said like, what's the deal with these people? Like, why haven't they paid you? And he said, oh no, 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 no. Like, we're, we're good. Like everyone's in good spirits. And I said, so what's the issue? He said, oh, well, summer break hit and we focused on being with our kids. They focused on being on their kids. And it just kind of like fell off our to-do list and we just didn't get around to it. And I was like, okay, so how certain are you that you could get the money back? He said, oh, probably eight out of 10. I went, okay. So obviously now we just multiply the columns together. Double revenue, 300. Cut expenses, 4,032. Collect on AR, 8,000. Oh my God. So how does the story end? Because it's a true story. The bad news is he didn't get the, the, the full 60,000 and it took him longer than two weeks. The good news is he got 50 of the 60,000, which was his goal in the first place. And instead of two weeks, it took four weeks. So we're talking about he doubled cash in the bank in one month because he knew where to go take action. And that came because he had someone knowing how to look at his financials and give him that feedback. And it's a skill that you can definitely learn too. You don't need to have an expert 
like me all the time at your beck and call because you can learn how to do this too. There's no question about it. And the thing is, is when we're taught revenue, revenue, sales cures all, there's no problem with good sales letter can't solve any of these like, you know, build a six figure, seven figure, eight figure business. It's all a focus on revenue. And yet look at how much faster and easier life can be if you can look at all 12 levers and know which is the appropriate one to pick next. So that's what I mean when I talk about knowing your numbers allows you to make executive decisions. And that's the first of the three things I want to share with you today. So the next thing is the idea of entrepreneur accounting. So in entrepreneur, there's entrepreneur accounting is actually different than tax accounting. And if you know about accounting, I would say entrepreneur accounting is very similar to what's technically called managerial accounting, just so you know. So entrepreneur accounting, like I said, we only need to know 2% to make good decisions. And the 98%, it's our accountant that's going to know about that. And so when you understand the difference of entrepreneur versus tax accounting, you get to do things like this. Check this out. So this is Justin. Uh, he's one of our board of advisors members. He's been to know your numbers. And in over the course of 10 months, he increased the sales of his business by 28%. And over the same time period, the same 10 months that he increased sales by 28%, his cash went up by 928%. In fact, this is the post-it note from our meeting when I was showing him his incredible success. So his revenue had gone from $560,978 to $715,8383. So his sales went up by 28%. His profit went from 97.3 to 254.04. So his profit went up by 161%. And his cash went from 13.7 to 141.7. And so that means his cash went up by 928%. Part of it his revenue went up. Absolutely. Part of it though, is he managed expenses. Look at his profit margin. It went from 17% to 36%. Part of it is he addressed his pricing. Part of it is he collected on money that was owed to him in different places. Like there was a, a multi-pronged strategy that went into this. And a big part of this comes from understanding what I, uh, so something I invented called the cash clarifier. So check this out. We're going to head back to, uh, we're going to head back over here. So, whoops, let's just flip this over. Uh, there we go. Okay. So let's imagine, we just need this guy to load. There we go. So let's just imagine that I, I put on a workshop and it happened in October. So that's this column right here. And let's say that Shanna is someone who wanted to buy a $20,000 uh, 12 month coaching package from me. Okay. So I sold her $20,000 at the workshop and the, the consulting was to go January through December. So $20,000 sold and she gave me $20,000. So I've sold it. I've collected the cash, but have I really earned the money yet? Like if something were to happen, like if Shanna died in December, like I would probably have to give the money back to her estate so it could be given, you know, to her, her, her successors. Or what happened if I didn't want to do it? What happened if I just decided I hate consulting, I can't stand it, I would have to give the money back instead of doing 12 months of consulting. So I, because I haven't earned it, it's not really my money. I sold it, I collected the cash, but it's kind of not really my money yet. I haven't earned it. I haven't exchanged the thing that is owed in exchange for the money, right? This is kind of like just good old fashioned common sense. So the way you account for that is you take a note that you're going to earn one twelfth because there's 12 months in a year, each of the months. So $20,000 is the deal. And I'm going to give her coaching in January, February, March, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And so 20,000 divided by 12 is 1667 every single month. And then by the end of December, you add all those numbers up. I've now earned all $20,000. So there's actually a difference between sales sold, cash collected, and earnings earned. They're on like different schedules. And the crazy thing is if you go into some of your marketing and sales software, it'll tell you that you sold $20,000. When you take a look at your bank account, you will see $20,000. But the problem comes when you start spending money that's not actually yours. You got to be careful so that you know how much you've actually earned. And, and when, you, when you use this cash clarifier tool, and you can actually also talk to your bookkeeper accountant about how they can help you with this as well, 
you start to get a ton of clarity on what you actually can spend and can't spend. And you know, this just keeps going. Like, what if I had a second person sign up? This person named Aladdin. What if, what if he also said in October, yep, I want the coaching package, $20,000. I'm not going to pay you all at once though. I'm going to pay you, uh, I'm going to pay you an equal installments for 12 months. So he gives me 1667 cash, cash, cash for 12 total months. However, the coaching package doesn't start till January. So just like Shanna, the earning schedule is exactly the same. Now, what if I have a third person named Paul and he was also at my workshop in October and he wants to buy and, and the, the next month comes around and he says, you know what? I thought about it and I definitely want to, I, I want to sign up with you. I want to do it. And so off we go. $20,000 is sold because that's, you know, that's when we signed the contract and that's when my marketing and sales software says I closed the deal. And, and, and he, what he's able to do is pay me $10,000 cash up front. And he says, you know, I really want to make sure that I can get as much of my cash given to you as I can handle because I want to write it off on my taxes. So he does that 10,000 in November, 2000 in December, and then he pays the balance over the next four months because it's the same coaching program that goes January through December. He's got the same earning schedule, right? So here's the thing. So what about how, how does that all play out for me, right? For the profit factory. Well, so as you can see, my sales in October was 20 to Shanna, 20 to Maladin, nothing to Paul. So 20 plus 20 is 40. So there's my 40. And then in November, Paul bought for 20. So there's my 20. That's what my marketing and sales software would tell me. What my bank would tell me is I've collected $21,000 of cash this month. I've collected another 11 there, another 3,000 there. So if I don't touch this cash at all, that would be $37,000 in total if you just add those three up. So on December the 31st, I'm going, dang, I got 37 Gs. I can go do anything that I want with this. Well, actually, you probably shouldn't because you didn't actually earn the 37 Gs. In fact, the point that you've earned the 37 Gs would be once you've earned $37,000. So if that would be one, two, three, so five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. You actually haven't earned the initial money until July has hit. Along the way that you've collected even more cash, so you'd have to just be very careful. So now this can sound complicated, but I'm gonna give you a great shortcut. And it's actually my first bit of homework I recommend that you do, and that is for you to actually contact your bank and open up a separate bank account. And that extra bank account is going to be for unearned revenue. So unearned revenue is cash that's come in, but you haven't earned it yet. You can use a simple spreadsheet like what I've shown you. You can also interact with your bookkeeper and accountant. They can help set up those kinds of uh, cash clarifiers. Now cash clarifier is my word for it. So they, if you tell them, Hey, I want a cash clarifier, they're not really going to know what you're talking about, but you show them this and they'll, you know, they'll get it right away. And, and by having a separate bank account for unearned revenue, you know what you can't touch. And even, maybe even more importantly is now you know what you can touch that stays in your main operating account. This will take you like maybe 30 minutes to set up a bank account that does that. And it'll give you so much peace of mind. It's absolutely huge. So I'm looking at the time. I know we're starting to run out of time and we're just now getting to our third lesson. And in this third lesson, I'm going to share, uh, how I help save four businesses from bankruptcy and uh, and I'm going to give you the tool so you can do the exact same thing. Now, here's the thing, because we're starting to run out of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you about the know your numbers course that's coming up. Um, we have the online course coming as well as, um, in, in a live version. So I'm just going to tell you about that. So if you already know that you want to sign up for know your numbers, you can just go ahead and do that now. And if you want to stick around, I'm unfortunately, I'm going to go over time here. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to go over time and I'm going to finish the third of the three lessons. And that way you can watch the replay. If you got to go, you can watch the replay. We'll make sure we get that out to you in the next day or two. And if you got the time, you can stick around and watch the third lesson right away. So either way, you're going to get all three lessons, even if it's through the recording. I just want to make sure that if you got to go, that I can respect your time, tell you about the Neuron Numbers three-day course. And then after that, you can head on to your next meeting or whatever that may be. So we're going to just jump to that part right now before we get back to our third lesson. So in business, I noticed something really powerful. It's, and, and I invented this thing called the five levels of 80, 20. So we've all heard of the 80, 20 curve before the 80, 20 curve 
you know, 80% makes a little difference and 20% makes a huge difference. And what I notice is there's a really big difference between the way that like Warren Buffett as a, as an investor, like he's able to do things that make billion, billions of dollars a year. And for me, there was like things that I was doing, they could make hundreds or thousands or maybe tens of thousands of dollars a year, but I don't know how to make billions of dollars a year. How can that be? And that's when I realized there's actually five levels to 80, 20. So the first level is personal. And if the bottom level falls out, you're screwed. Like, you know, Tiger Woods was on top of the world. He had a major personal issue, the infidelity stuff, the golf club and the Cadillac Escalade. And, and like his life was never the same after that, right? Now, I mean, people do recover from, from big losses. I myself had an illness. I couldn't walk for three months uh, 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 just over 10 years ago. And um, I was able to recover from that. But my point is, is that personal level is the foundation. Health, um, relationships, like if you get divorced, oh my God, that can totally tank, you know, your productivity and your business and all the rest, your faith, um, your fitness, your diet, like your habits, like all of it is in this personal realm. Super important. This realm here too is skill. So this is how we learn to do Facebook ads. This is how we learn to write a proposal. This is how we learn to negotiate. This is, it's all the kind of like frontline technical skills that we learn along the way in business. And then there's manager, level three. And manager, that's where we manage and lead and organize other people who have skill. And then level four is executive. And at this level, we're like setting strategy for an entire company. And we're also taking care of like high level things like financials and strategy and risk and all the rest. And then level five investor is like, now we're not even really actively in the business unless it's a bit of a mentorship or a strategic partnership type thing. But you know, this is, this is like where Warren Buffett is, right? And he's just exchanging money for money. Now down at this level of the 80, 20 curve and in the lower levels, it's usually like uh, low risk, low reward, low leverage, low consequence over here at the top of the 80, 20 curve, it's high risk, high reward, high leverage, high consequence. Now you've probably gone to a lot of workshops and a lot of those workshops are going to be this level two skill and level one personal. If you go to Tony Robbins, that's a level one personal workshop. If you learn how to launch a funnel or how to negotiate or anything like that, that's a level two skill. Know your numbers is a level four executive course. And even if you have a small business, even if you're at less than hundred thousand dollars in revenue, you actually are an investor in your own business. You actually are the executive of your business, even if it doesn't feel like it. And if you have a business that's like a million or five or 10 or 20, you really know that you have <laughs> level four executive responsibilities. And so I invite you, we've got the Know Your Numbers workshop. The Know Your Numbers workshop um, is being launched very, very soon. We're actually in the pre-sale right now. And online, we're gonna launch this thing on September 16th, 2019. And the live event is October 234 uh, in Austin. Now, you could wait. You could wait if you wanted to. The online course is $1,000 and the in-person ticket is $1,000. But if you'd like a special deal and if you want to be one of the first people to take advantage of this, you can just head over to knowyournumbersworkshop.com. So I'm going to pull that up for you right now. And the knowyournumbersworkshop.com describes a little bit about the three days. Day one, entrepreneur accounting. Day two, the treasure map, which gets into like executive decision making. And day three, your business. Now, how do we implement everything you've just learned into your business? Click this button to buy now and you will get the Know Your Numbers Workshop online course. And actually all these pictures are taken from the online course. So like literally we had a live camera crew come in the last time we did this course. And you'll get the online course, like I said, on October, I'm sorry, September the 16th. We're gonna turn it on, we're gonna release the course and you will get all of it on September the 16th. You'll also get the course immediately. Now, because this is the pre-sale, instead of charging $1,000 for the workshop and then $1,000 for the ticket, we're gonna give you the online course and as a free bonus, the live ticket, just click that big button and it's only $495. So for $495 US dollars, because it's the pre-sale, you get access to the online course the first day that it becomes available on September the 16th. And you also get a seat at the, you get a bonus ticket, in fact, to the Austin event, which is October 234. Now, obviously the online course, uh, we can have an unlimited number of people buy that. The event in Austin, we currently only have 50 seats set up in the hotel ballroom. 
and we've already sold 21 tickets. So, uh, and we've got 384 people who've registered for this webinar. <laughs> so, you know, if you're really wanting to take advantage of like 75% off, then purchase this right away. Um, this presale is going to be open until Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So today is Thursday, August the 15th. So that would be Tuesday, August the, what would it be? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Is it the 20th? Whatever Tuesday is at 9 p.m. Eastern, that's when this presale goes away. You'll still be able to buy the course. You'll still be able to get tickets, but instead of it being $500, $495 for everything, the price is going to go up. And, and, and so this is the best price available. We've never offered all this at this price. I highly recommend you go take advantage of it right now. Save yourself 75%. And more importantly, get yourself as an entrepreneur to a place that you're able to make these kinds of things happen where sales can go up by 28%, profit can go up by 161% and cash can go up by 928%. Okay, perfect. If you got to go head on out and you can watch this third lesson in the replay. Okay, so our third tool that we're talking about today is cash flow forecasting. This is, like I said, a tool that's helped save four businesses from bankruptcy. Um, we're a little bit over time, so I just need to send one message here to make sure that we're good. Um, uh, Jill, I'm, uh, okay, perfect. Okay, good. So, saving four businesses from bankruptcy. I showed for these four entrepreneurs, the cash flow forecast. Two of them, like I said, they were students in Know Your Numbers. The exact same course that I just told you you could register for, that's all they bought. They just bought the $495 course. Uh, for some of them, it was $1,000, um, but they bought the course. They showed up, they learned cash flow forecast, and they went and saved their businesses. The other two were in private consulting, either one-on-one -on -one with me or our board of advisors program. So let's get one going. A cash flow forecast looks like this. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so that's overwhelming. Let's do the simple version. Okay, so a cash flow forecast, I'm just gonna show you how to build one. And don't worry, you don't have to take a million notes because I'm actually going to show you how you can just have my spreadsheet. So don't worry about having to figure it out all right now. Just focus so that you can pay attention and understand what's going on here. And then you can just copy mine, which I'll show you how to do that right away. So in a cash flow forecast, it's a spreadsheet just like this. Across the top, we're just putting the 13 weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, the 13 weeks of the quarter. So week one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. We're going to put what the period is. So August 1st through October 31st. And this, you know, this is the period starting on, uh, ending on August 1st, 8th, 15th, as you can, it's just seven days, seven days. It's just one week, one week, one week, one week. That's all it is. So far, so good. Very stone simple. So the next thing we're going to add to our cash flow forecast is we're actually going to add what are the average monthly expenses that we have that we have cash go out. So you might go like, well, but I don't really know. And it fluctuates each month. And I, you know, I don't really know what to do about that. Well, here's the thing. We're not looking for like surgical procedure. This cash flow forecast is not being submitted to the government for taxes, like nothing like that, okay? This is just for you to make a good decision. And so you could just look at your credit card statement. If you, if you run everything through one credit card, you'll be able to just look at the credit card and say, on average, how much am I spending every single month? You know, if it's a credit card and a main checking account or something, just on average, what does a typical month look like? If we take out the big peaks, if we take out the, the like, Amazon Prime Day sales, if you're selling on Amazon, or if we take the launch out, if you're doing a launch, or if we take the like back to school sale out or something like that, like what does a normal average month look like? And so we're going to take that number and we're just going to put it in here. So let's say it's $10,000. So August 1st, because that's the start of the month, $10,000. August 29th, because that's the week that September 1st hits, $10,000. Same thing for September 26th, because that's the week that October 1st hits. So that's it. Super stone simple. You can figure this out in like probably under 10 minutes, what your average monthly expenses are. Just go on your online banking, credit card statements, or whatever. Then from there, we're going to add our occasional expenses. So it, let's say that I'm, uh, I have to pay commission to sit to um, someone that's uh, launching that, let's say someone helped me promote a product 
and I'm going to have to pay them $5,000 commission and then $2,500 there and $1,000 there. Maybe this other new thing is maybe I got a salesperson and they're closing the sale and it looks like it's going to close here. And so I'm expecting that I'll have to pay $5,000 in commissions here. So this is all forecast. Like this says August 1 through October 31. Assume right now that it's August 1st, right? And so we're looking forward. I get that today's not August 1st. It's actually August 15th, but let's just say it's August 1st. We're looking forward. All this is a forecast. We're trying to predict to see what's coming down the pipeline. Let's say you're going to a workshop. Let's say you're going to a $10,000 workshop. Thankfully, know your numbers is not $10,000, but let's say there's another workshop you're going to do is $10,000. You want to go to it. You know you're going to have to buy the ticket here, 10 grand. Now, that's not a normal expense, so it doesn't go part of your average monthly expenses. It's a one-time expense, so you're going to put it in here, and you're going to put it on the proper date. Maybe there's like new tools you're buying. Say that you've got a welding company or a plumber or something like that. Let's say you know that you're going to have to replace your tools in October. You're going to have to spend five grand until whatever it is, right? And you can keep adding lines in here. You can just like whatever it is, it's going to make this look complete for you. So then from there, we're going to go and add the next part, which is just like we did here, average cash out. We're now going to look at average cash in. Now this isn't revenue. Okay. It's not like, oh, I know I'm going to sell $3,000 here and here and here. It's when is the cash actually going to come in? And sometimes cash comes in after the sales made by a week. Like maybe you've sent an invoice to someone and you're waiting to get paid. Or maybe there is a one week lag from your credit card processor between when you generate the sale and process the credit card to when you actually get the cash. So we're not talking about sales. Remember there is sales sold, earnings earned and cash collected. I literally just mean cash collected. So if we know that we collect approximately 3000 cash every two weeks, that's what we put in there. Next up, just like we did average and then one time, we have average here and now we're going to add our occasional cash inflows. So let's say that I'm going to make commission, right? Because maybe I promoted someone else's product and I'm, I'm guessing that I'm going to get $5,000 here and I'm guessing I'm going to get $5,000 there. Let's say I'm going to have a back to school sale and I know it's going to increase my, the amount of cash coming in by $1,000. Maybe I'm going to teach a workshop and I get paid a speaker fee to show up and teach for $500, right? So these are all just one time or occasional cash inflows, uh, cash flowing in. That is the work that you've now done the hard work. And I'm telling you, you can do all of this in under an hour, all of it. And especially because I'm going to send you the, the, uh, the free, uh, a free template, you'll, you'll do it even faster than an hour. So then from there, all we're doing is we're adding subtotals. So if I take 3000 plus 5,000 plus, no, so three plus five is eight plus one is nine plus 500 is 9,500. Voila. This right here, the weekly cash in is 9,500. Likewise, if I take a look here, if I add up all the cash outflows, it's $10,000. Likewise here, what are all the cash inflows? Cash in, zero, so the total for the week is zero. Cash outflows here, total outflows, total 5,000. So cash out, 5,000. So that's all this is. See, it says weekly cash in, weekly cash out, just like that. Week after week after week after week after week. That's it. So then from there, I'm going to add, what is the difference between the two? So I'm going to add cash flow, right? So we had 95 in, we had 10,000 out. And so that means our net cash change for the week because 95 came in and 10,000 went out is negative 500. Now, remember, this is a forecast. So we're looking forward into the future. So I'm guessing that that's going to happen at the end of this, by the end of this week. Then from there, if the next week I'm guessing I'm going to have zero in and 5,000 out, then I'm guessing I'm going to have a negative outflow of $5,000. Then the next week I'm guessing 3,000 is going to come in and zero is going to go. So I'm going to have a, a positive cash flow for the week of 3,000. And this is literally just what's happening in these seven days. So the next thing we got to do is all of this changes dramatically depending on how much cash you had in the bank in the first place. If you had no money, that's a very different situation than if you had like $100,000 in the bank. So just this simple box right here, like today, the day that you're starting to create your cash flow forecast, let's say it's August, you know, let's say it's like just before August 1st. So you're starting to build this out. You're going to put your starting bank balance right there, $5,000. And if it's 10, put 10. If it's 100, put 100. If it's $5, put $5. Whatever it is, just put it in right there. So then from there, 
we're going to start each week with a certain amount of cash. So we started with $5,000, which means we started week one with $5,000. Remember, we already know that the net cash is negative 500 because we had 95 go out and 10,000 come in. So the net cash was 500, negative 500. Since I started with 500, that means I, I can easily predict that by the end of this week, I'm gonna have $4,500 remaining in the bank. Like if I log into online banking, this is what I should see. Now, uh, the end cash for this week actually becomes the start cash for the next week. And then we adjust for the amount of cash that we predict is going to come and go. And then we're going to get the end cash that week. And the end cash that week is going to be the start cash the next week and on and on and on. And this is what creates our cash flow forecast. And so we had 5,000 to start the week. We predict that for this week, we're going to end up with a negative 500 flow. We predict we're going to end this week at 4,500. End cash becomes start cash. We're going to start with 4,500. We're predicting, because we're going to have zero in and 5,000 out, we're predicting we're going to have a negative $5,000 cash flow. And so 4,500 minus 5,000 is, we're actually going to be overdrawn in our checking account by $500. We're going to be at negative $500. Okay, so end cash becomes start cash. So negative 500 here becomes negative 500 there for the next week. We predicted that we'd have 3,000 come in, zero go out. So that's net cash of 3,000 plus for the week. So if we start with negative 500, we have plus 3,000. We're going to end the week with plus 2,500. And on we go and on we go and on we go for the whole quarter, right? And that is our cash flow forecast. So now to really make this useful, we're now going to add something called conditional formatting. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say anytime that we're in the green, like we're in the black, like we're positive, I'm going to make that green. And every time that we got trouble spots, because it's negative, because it's negative, we're going to make that red. So that's what this is. The, now we know what this looks like. So now I basically just have a dashboard that I can just look at this and I can know, oh my God, I got to fix the reds. I need more greens. And now it all just becomes a game of figuring out how can I manipulate my decisions? How can I change my decisions? How can I change the deals that I have with people so that I can have a completely green cash flow forecast? So let's play with that a little bit. What if I said, you know what? Uh, this workshop, um, I'm sorry, this right here, I'm paying $5,000 in commission to someone and then 2,500 and then $1,000. Because I'm good friends with them, I'm going to ask them, you know what? I'm working on reorganizing my cash flow. Is there any way that I could just pay you 2,500 here and 5,000 there? I just, I'm just going to flip the two. You're going to get the same total amount. The, the amounts are just going to get flipped. Are you okay with that? And, and they say, yes. Okay. So I'm going to switch them. But first look, this is red, this is green. And then it's red, 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 right? So if I contact that person and say, and ask them for a favor now, Look at what just happened. Same exact situation, right? I'm still going to end up paying the same amount of money, but because I manage the flow differently, I'm still going to end up in the same situation, right? That I'm going to owe the money and I'm going to have some red weeks. But guess what? I just saved myself from having a red week here, which means I'm going to have pissed off people. I'm not going to pay my bills. Like there's a lot of anger that comes with that. I've bought myself time. And because the next week was a positive cash flow, I actually got the benefit not of one, but two bonus weeks. And so now I actually have three weeks to work with instead of just one. Okay, great. So now I got to make up for this $15,000 cash flow and I've got three weeks to do it. What can I do about that? Well, you know what? Instead of taking this workshop, this $10,000 and doing the in-person version, I'm going to take the online version. And the online version is only $2,500. So what does that do for me? Okay, that saves me big time. That really saves me a ton, right? Okay, awesome. Now, um, what about what about the other 7,500? Well, you know, maybe what I could do is maybe I need some cash from my own personal finance. And I've got, you know, I've got $2,000 that I could put in. So I'm actually going to add something here. Cash in is going to be loan from myself, you know, from my line of credit. And I'm going to give myself $2,500 and I'm going to do it right, right away. So what's that going to do? Okay, perfect. We've now fixed this even more. Uh, what else can I do? Well, you know what? This workshop that I'm teaching, it's only giving me $500. 
and, and it's gonna take me like 20 hours to do that. I wonder if I could launch another quick product in the next three months. Like maybe I can, I can email my list and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do a, a one day virtual uh, intensive and uh, I'm offering four spots at $2,500 a piece. First four who, who, uh, who sign up, get it. So I'm going to, I'm going to politely decline. I'm not doing the workshop anymore. It just wasn't worth my time, but I'm going to launch a mini intensive and I'm going to spend three weeks announcing and talking about it. And lo and behold, $2,500, four people sign up. No, I'm sorry. Only three people signed up. I didn't sell them all, but I still sold three spots and now I got $7,500 there. And guess what? I just cleared up the situation. And now I get to go four weeks, right? Four weeks of being safe. And on I go and on I go and on I go and on I go. And as I continue to tweak this, guess what I'm also doing? I'm keeping a to-do list on my, on my like, you know, like I'm on a notepad or on my computer that, okay, note to self, I need to do this launch. I need to transfer money from my line of credit. I need to talk to my promotion partner to see if we can flip these two days and amounts that I'm spent. So I'm literally using my financials to now guide my decision making and my decision making is now guiding my actions. And because I'm able to see the future like this, I no longer have the, oh shit, terrified moment when I can't pay my bills and my credit card starts declining because the way it used to be, I was going to be upside down by $2,500 here. And if your credit card starts declining, now it cancels for all your online subscriptions. Now you got to go back and update it and pay down your card and Oh my God, it's just such a nightmare. But by having a cash flow forecast, I get to see the future and I can take action before the oh shit times hit. And that's the power of a cash flow forecast. And I mean, we gave an example of a revenue example. We talked about a negotiation example. We talked about cutting expenses with this workshop, right? Like there's so many different things that you can do to make sure that you stay safe and in good shape. So... Uh, my recommendation to you is to actually send us an email. And that email is to support at profitfactory.com. By emailing us at support at profitfactory.com, we will email you how you can get the cash flow forecast. And that way you don't have to spend like, you know, three hours building the spreadsheet um, or an hour if you're good at Excel. But, uh, but we can just send you ours. And then from there, you can just copy it, plug in your own numbers, and off you go. So as I was mentioning, now I, I'm sincerely hoping that you're seeing that by knowing your numbers and, and being at that level four executive, it is now directly going to alter and accelerate and expand and improve the kinds of decisions and the kinds of actions that you take down at every single level. It's going to change how you lead people. You're going to say, you know what, we're going to stop that project, but we're going to start this one. Um, we need to hire this kind of person. We don't need to hire this other contractor anymore. Like it filters all the way down. And then in terms of even the things you do, right? So you as the leader of the business, maybe maybe you decide, yeah, we got to go launch that other thing. And you're the one who knows how to do Infusionsoft and, and ads and write copy or whatever. Okay, perfect, great. So, so you're going to wear your executive hat to make the decision. Then you're going to take that hat off. You're going to go put your skill hat on. And the reality is, as we as entrepreneurs, unless your business is like, I don't know, north of $10 million in revenue with like a good margin, we pretty much all are still in multiple different levels all at the same time. Like most entrepreneurs in the five, six, and seven range, a uh, figure range in revenue are, have all five of these hats on just at different times and differing amounts. And so the issue is when we get really good at level two skill, but we don't have the level four lens to be able to make those executive decisions. And that's where coming to the Know Your Numbers Workshop kicks in. So again, if you go to knowyournumbersworkshop.com, you can sign up. Um, the online course will be available as of Monday, September 16th. The in-person bonus of coming to study with me personally in Austin is October 234. And I'll tell you, depending on your learning style, maybe you prefer the online course, but I'll tell you the in-person course is it's really special. Like you'll get to meet other entrepreneurs, right? Who also have a passion to be at that level four executive level in their business. You're going to meet not only high level people, but you're going to get to work with them. You're going to get to do some live exercises. You're, I actually take everyone, we put them into groups 
and you get an opportunity to work side by side with someone to actually analyze the numbers of business, of real business, you know, of real business situations and getting that live opportunity is fantastic. And furthermore, if you're like me, sometimes I complete online courses really completely and I do a great job. And other times I get through a few modules and I don't make it the whole way through. And so I really encourage you to consider taking advantage of the bonus ticket and coming to Austin because then it'll just be three straight days. You'll be super focused, game on, and you'll get the course done. And, and this is also part of just our commitment at the Profit Factory team to make sure that you get the education is whether online's the way to go because maybe you live far away or maybe it's too expensive to fly or maybe you know getting a hotel in Austin just isn't in the budget or whatever, then you've got the online option. And, and, if, and if you're just not someone who works well with online courses and you want the accountability of being in a room in person, then you can do that too. Either way, we want to help you get this ability because it is literally, it's, it's, not, it's not overblown to say it'll change your life. It will absolutely change how you run your business and that will evolve into how much cash you've got in the bank and that will definitely affect the kind of lifestyle you get to enjoy, the kind of security that you have, the confidence that you have in being able to manage your everyday. So in closing, thank you so much. Um, the Know Your Numbers workshop it has been over a decade in the making. And whether you ever do the course or not, even if you never do the course and all you ever did was watch this, this, uh, this webinar, I sincerely hope you've gotten something that you can now take, whether it's the cash flow forecast or it's the decision making matrix, whether it's the cash clarifier with sales sold, earnings earned, cash collected. M maybe you went and, went and opened that bank account for your unearned revenue. Sincerely, I hope there's at least one piece that you've been able to take into your business and it'll make a difference for you. Because at the end of the day, uh, I want to fulfill my potential as an entrepreneur and I'm sure that you do too. Um, you know, there's a, an incredible quote. It says, hell is, hell is meeting the man I could have been or hell is meeting the woman I could have been. And uh, I know that in, when, you know, when, when I get to the end of my life, I want to look back and say, hey, I sure did a great job. And when my entrepreneur career comes to an end, I want to say, hey, I was a total pro and I, and I took care of it. And in and, and between here and the end, I want to make very clear decisions. I want to be very confident. I don't want to be struggling and frustrated anymore. I don't want to be the person who opens up their, their sales report and sees, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue, but then opens up his bank and says, where'd the money go? I only see $12,000. What's up? Right. And that affects like how we're able to pay for things for our family to fulfill dreams that we have. It, it's it, this ability to be clear and confident and settled and to be a great leader and to make excellent decisions is truly game changing. And so I wholeheartedly hope that through this course today that you've been able to gain some extra insights. So head on over to knowyournumbers.com for, uh, knowyournumbers uh, sorry, knowyournumbersworkshop.com. Get yourself registered in. This promotion is open until Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then after that, the price goes up by a fair bit. Thank you so much. My name is Tim Francis and we'll see you soon.